Okay, now, first we're gonna go through uh, parts of what we talked about before uh, about differences between male and female for us to understand why many marriages have problems. The reason is because of the differences in the male and female and because of the sin of mankind and therefore we cannot cope with this problem. Now before there is the fall of mankind, before we sin, then uh, Adam and Eve could manage the relationship very well because they did not have sin. But after uh, mankind have sinned, then we have different kinds of problem. So here we look at the differences between male and female. Now generally males are interested in action. Uh, let's see. I, um, Okay, now, um, males are more interested in actions. They want to, uh, instead of talking, instead of relationship, most males are interested in doing things, in, in the project, in the, in the job. And then females are interested in family and the relationship. I'm sorry, the word is spelled wrong. It's F-E-M-A-L-E. -E, female more interested in family and relationship and this is very important God created us in that way because then men can do different kinds of work outside of the family and then the female they put more attention to relationship they would build up the family and build up the relationship without the female then we all grow up without love with very little love but when there is our mothers, a mother take care of us and care for us and that brings love to the family. So it's very important that female pay attention to family and relationship. And it's important that men are interested in action, in doing work and jobs and that's necessary. Okay? And then males don't like to talk about feelings. Males don't like to talk about feelings. They they just talk about things. They talk about uh, sports, what happens in the world, uh, uh, business. But female like to talk about, have to talk about feelings. When they are feeling, some people describe it, it's like a pressure cooker. That if they are feeling that they don't take care of, it, it becomes more and more pressure. They have more and more pressure in the heart because they treasure relationship. When they treasure relationship, when they don't have a healthy relationship, then they feel very unhappy. So uh, they have to talk about feelings if they have negative feelings or happy feelings. When they have happy feelings, they want to talk about it. And for men, it's not necessary to talk about the feelings that much. That when they are unhappy, men like to hide and think about it instead of uh, talking about it okay and then males have to learn before they can love that males uh, don't generally care about people that much and female they are more willing to love and want to be loved they want to be loved they need to be loved more now males also need to be loved but we don't say it out and it's not the greatest need of men of, of men the greatest need of men is to have sense of achievement and men want to be respected instead of being loved. They want the wife to respect them and say, well, you're great, you're doing a good job. Uh, that's why women like to ask their husband, do you love me? And men say, why do you keep asking me? I, I'm with you, that means I, I love you. So males don't you know, they, they don't have a strong need of being loved. The st strongest need is to be respected. That the wife would say, you're a great person, you're a capable person, then they feel very happy. And then they, males sometimes forget the family responsibilities easily. They will forget the family responsibilities. They will, uh, uh, they, you know, they might forget about the children. They might forget about, is there enough food in the family? 
And then females have strong responsibilities toward family. They, they remember the needs of the family uh, more. And also, you notice that, uh, you know, very often females get very unhappy. They will say, oh, uh, they, they'll say the husband is not doing well, the children are not doing well, and then they feel very unhappy because they have a strong sense of responsibility. If the husband and the children are not behaving well, they, they have a strong sense of responsibility and they feel very unhappy about it. And then males don't want to be nagged. They don't want the, the woman to keep telling them what to do and keeps complaining. And female nagged easily. They would complain easily and they would keep telling the husband what to do uh, what, uh, what, and tell, tell the husband about their feelings. And if the husband doesn't listen, she will repeat. So these are some big differences between male and female, and, and because of that, that uh, then there are uh, different kinds of problems. Okay, now let me describe briefly what the problem is. Now female, they want to be loved. They want to talk about their feelings. They want to be cared for. And then when they talk to their husband, because husbands generally don't like to talk that much, and they don't like to talk about feelings that much, and they don't want to listen too much. And so when the wives keep talking about problems and their unhappy feeling, then the husband feel bothered. They don't feel, they don't feel happy about the marriage. Now, what is the difference between marriage? Bef before, before marriage, then the, the man will feel very happy with the, uh, the girlfriend because the girlfriend doesn't have uh, many demands. Uh, the girlfriend just have fun with him and they just chat and there's no, no pressure. But after marriage, the wife sees there's a need of different, you know, there are different kinds of needs and she has unhappy feeling when there are needs un, unmet and when there are problems, when the husband doesn't listen to her. Now, before marriage, the husband listened to the girlfriend more at the beginning of the dating process because the and there is not much pressure though the girlfriend doesn't complain that much the girlfriend would just chat and have fun and laugh and 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 uh, the men like it very much they like it very much when the when a girl has you know is very happy and it's uh, free of burdens and and they see the the girlfriend smile and they're very very happy so this is very uh, before marriage, generally, the men would like the relationship more. But then they are not ready because they don't, uh, they don't realize that after marriage, they, want to, they need to respond to the wife. Now, because before marriage, it's very natural, easier for the, for the man to care for the woman because the woman is more, uh, in a way, she doesn't nag so much, she doesn't complain so much. So the men find it easier to relate to her. But after marriage, when they are facing real problems in the family, they have to provide for the family, and, and a woman, uh, maybe she has problem in, in doing the jobs in the home, then she has unhappy feelings. She has unhappy feelings and she wants to talk about it. So for female, the wedding is the beginning of a deeper relationship. Now for men, after marriage, the, the men want to say, okay, now I marry you and you are at home, uh, you do different things, I, I go out to work, and then, and, and that's it, you know. They don't think of the beginning of romance. They say the romance was for, for the dating period. Then they want to chase after the girl and they, have romance and after marriage is business that's why men are more interested in action they actually dating for them is an action they want to chase after the girl and be able to marry the girl and for the for the girl she's more interested in a long-term relationship the caring relationship so that's why many 
women are disappointed after marriage because she said, the husband doesn't listen to me anymore. Uh, when I tell him, tell him what needs to be done, when I tell him about my feelings, he doesn't want to listen anymore. But he was more interested when he was chasing after the woman. And the woman was, you know, didn't understand that because men see dating as a, an action, as a project. They need to find a wife. That's the project. And after they find a the wife, they feel that's it, you know, and then they don't want to listen. They think listening to the problem of the woman is hard work. So I want to say to the woman, you need to guide the husband, to guide the husband about your needs instead of nagging, instead of complaining and say, I like you to listen to me and I'm very happy when you listen to me and I like to, you know, we like, I like that we can do the house chores together, that you'll help me in different things. And whenever the husband does anything, that she appreciates it. Then the husband feels respected. And then he has more motivation. And then when the wife talks about happy things, then the husband is, more, is happier. And, and then when the wife has to talk about problems, uh, it's very important that the wife doesn't complain to the husband, but instead of saying, we have this problem we have to face, how can we face it? How can we solve this problem? How can we solve this problem of providing the food and taking care of the children, taking care of the house, and uh, what, uh, what are your suggestions? I'm sure you have ways uh, to solve the problem. So if the woman respects the husband and, and uh, instead of complaining, say you can do it and uh, please tell me what we can do and ask the husband and then for the husband to get married we need to learn to realize that women have this characteristic of loving people and they want to be loved and that is why women need to be loved and if we want to get married we want to be prepared to talk to our wives and listen to them and respond to them. That we need to learn to understand this characteristic of our wife is very important that they are, uh, because they, they can care for us, they, and they love and they need love also. So for any man who want to get married, we need to learn to respect the wife and listen to her and care about her and that way the marriage will become healthy but most marriages the problem is the husband doesn't listen to the wife doesn't care about the wife that much he thinks that i i earn the money and i just do some work then then i'm loving you and they didn't realize that uh, we men have to listen to the wife and care for her love her make her feel loved and care for and then she will feel comforted and then she can uh, she will feel loved and then she would have less complaint and then whenever she has any problem then the husband listen to her and respond to her and solve the problem together then both parties are very happy but for many marriages because the men don't listen and don't don't talk much they don't want to talk about their feelings then the wife feel now there is a big gap between them, between them, and the man doesn't talk, and so she feels very, she feels there's a distance, and so when she feels there's a problem, she nags more, and she's unhappy more, and then when she's unhappy and nags a lot, then the, the man becomes very unhappy, and the man would, would not be interested to listen to her, and then uh, and then they will have problems, they yell at each other, and then they, they become unhappy with each other, they, they, uh, and then they dislike the marriage. So that's what happened to many marriages. It's very similar. Most marriages are very similar. And my description of the characteristic of the male and female, just now when you listen to me, you might find it very true in your family. And uh, you might also find it very true uh, how problems develop in your family so we need to learn to how to 
work on our marriages before we can help other marriages. We need to learn to listen and care. And then for the woman not to nag, but to guide the husband, to let him know what you need, what you like. And, and when, whenever he does anything, we want to appreciate him. So it's very important for both parties, for the man and the wife, always to uh, appreciate each other and not to complain. Whenever there is complaint, then there is more problem. Instead of complaint, we say, uh, I have this problem. How can we solve it? Now, complaining is saying you are the one who is at fault. You have done something wrong and then it causes problem. So I hope you understand this difference between male and female. Now, in a, another session before, we have talked about marriages and you can uh, look, uh, re uh, watch the videos before about marriage. And now here, I just briefly talk about the difference between a male and female. And then in the families, people hurt each other easily because they say, we see everyone, uh, we see the husband or wife every day and the children every day. We don't have to be so polite. So they think they don't have to be so polite and then they, they uh, complain very easily. And what happens when they complain easily, then the other person feel unhappy. And then, and then they hurt each other. They say, you didn't listen to me, uh, you, you didn't care for me, and then all this complain. And, and then they will hurt each other easily. So it's very easy for people to complain. Complain is uh, one of the main killers of, fam of marriages. So because basically people have no love not, love, not much love, because people want to get what they want. The men want to get an obedient wife, a lovely wife, a caring wife, and a wife wants to get a caring husband, a husband who can provide. They want to get something. So the main motivation of many people is to get something from the spouse instead of giving something to the spouse. If we think of, we want to give to the, to the, uh, to the relationship, we want to give to the spouse, then that is love. To give is to love, to give comfort, to give care, to give help, to give love. That is love. Okay? And then they yell at each other and criticize and nag. And then uh, the more they criticize and nag, the, the more unhappy the other person is. And then they don't communicate or listen. They don't think it's necessary to communicate. Especially men. Men don't want to talk about things in detail. And women like to talk about things in detail. And then men get very impatient. They get impatient when their wife has so much to talk about. Now, it's very important that we learn to realize that relationship is more important than business. That's why the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart and then love people as ourselves. The main, the most important commandment of God is to love, to care about people, to build up the relationship. It, the main thing is not to do business, but very often men just want to do business and they don't want to communicate. Loving includes communication and includes the heart to care for the other person that they want to care about the other person and want to do something to bless the other person. Okay, so they don't communicate and listen. So we need to learn to communicate and listen and not to complain. When there is complaining, then it will block the relationship. When the wife says, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, and you didn't listen to me. Whenever it's saying you didn't do it, whenever it's saying you did not do it, then it's complaining. It's better to say, uh, I like you to, uh, I like uh, f for us to have some time to talk to each other. Is it okay that we talk to each other and communicate with each other? Uh, I like to hear what is in your heart and I like you to hear what is in my heart so husbands need to learn to see that this is very important in relationship is very important now the communication of male and females are very different too the communication of males are generally about events things they do uh, the job the work the ministry and women like to talk about how they feel what are the personal problem they are facing, what they are unhappy about. So we need to 
make this communication uh, match. That means the husband need to listen to the wife's feelings and respond to the feelings and say, oh, I hear that you are unhappy. I hear that you, you, uh, you, you're hurt when I said that. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I did not listen to you. So the husband will respond to the wife's feeling and say, I care about you and uh, uh, I, I want to make you feel loved. So that communication will make the wife feel comforted. Now, I, I say that to my wife every day, many times. Now, she's at work now, but generally when she's here, I have my computer here, she has a computer next to me, and then we'll talk from time to time. And then from time to time, I'll touch her, I'll, I'll uh, hug her to make her feel loved, and I, I will listen to her. So I want to always communicate love so that I have a a marriage of love so that the marriage be, does not become a pain for many people the marriage becomes a pain so we want to uh, communicate and listen and now some people say you know I had this thought before too you know I'm such a busy pastor I have so many things to do why do I waste time in communication so many males, many pastors think that spending time in communication is wasting time. Now this is a very wrong concept because loving God and loving people is not a waste of time. It's the greatest commandment to love God and love people. So it's not a waste of time. We should not have this concept that talking is wasting of time. When we love the other person and care for the other person, is building up relationship, building up the marriage. Is then it's we are guarding the marriage and we are guarding our heart so that our heart will not be burdened by different problems. People who have marriage problem, they are burdened. Their life is burdened. They will not be able to have joy. So communication is not a waste of time. Now sometimes the wife has a lot of things, many things they're unhappy about. And then the husband says, that's too hard to listen to her. She has so many complaints because he, did, he didn't listen to her. And it, you know the problems accumulate. There are more and more problems. So whenever there is any problem, we want to solve it. We want to face it together. We want to care about, the husbands want to care about the wives and listen to her and face the problem together and then the wife feels happy and then this problem is take, taken care of but in many marriages there is a pile of problems that have not been taken care of that all this pain and hurts in the past has not been taken care of and so when they think about the spouse it's always negative feelings so i hope when you listen to this you'll say for men to say yes i want to listen to my wife and and face this problem and then for the wife uh, I, I need to learn to respect my husband honor him and talk about the problems one by one and and don't complain to him but face it together and invite him to think of ways to solve the problems okay and then number four because many people don't appreciate each other they take it for granted that the husband go out to work that's a lot of work so we say thank you for doing this I appreciate you uh, uh, that is very important for you to do it and then the husband says to the wife oh you have done a good job you have taken care of the family you you uh, your cooking is nice and I like your food and I like everything about you now, I I told my wife many times when I think of you I feel happy I feel happy I like you everything you do makes me happy so if we can treat each other like that, to appreciate each other, then, then they enjoy the relationship. And then many people take things for granted and then you know, they say, well, for my wife to cook is her natural responsibility. I don't have to thank her. But we need to learn to thank each other. And uh, to neglect, many people neglect each other and they, they just don't listen to their person and just walk away. And that way it's uh, the the marriage will have a problem or get emotional get angry or depressed and they don't want to talk to each other and very unhappy because 
generally because the other person complain and then they feel unhappy and then they have anger and then the other person have more anger so there's anger is added up more and more there's more and more anger more and more unhappy feelings so we when we take care of these problems then when, when we see each other we can be happy whenever you know when my wife comes home i'm happy to see her i hug her i tell her i love her i'm very happy to see her and she always says that to me and uh and also that's one way we appreciate each other even little things we do even when i kiss her she says thank you and when she kisses me i said thank you too and i and i so we thank each other for every little thing we do for each other and then number seven force people to change or do things so because the wife sees that the husband doesn't talk she forces him to talk and she yells at him and instead of forcing him to change we can guide him the wife can guide him and and then whenever he listens and the wife says you you've done a good job you you listen to me i enjoyed that time and then uh the husband says to the wife don't nag me don't say things so many times and they and then they're unhappy instead he can say to the wife okay i heard what you said okay i'll think of how to solve it when the wife says it one time he will say yes i heard what you said yes let's think about let's talk, discuss how we can solve the problem instead of saying stop talking stop yelling stop complaining that doesn't help okay number eight want the other person to disappear now when the marriage get worse and worse and then they just don't want to see the other person and then then the marriage would have more and more problem and and very often they just tolerate the marriage so hope we are not tolerating the marriage so when you see this it's very important for pastors that we grow in a marriage relationship that we really learn to love you know I have to t say the truth many pastors can preach about love but they forget to love their wife they forget to care about the wife and listen to the wife and they think I, I care about the members it's more important to care about the wife first so the wife feels loved there is love in the family it's a family of love and then we care about other people the priority is always God our family and other people and then uh, ministry so it's first people God and people not ministry first and then when we have good relationship with God and good relationship with people and then our ministry will go better and better okay and then also people follow the sinful nature easily in uh, marriages they react to people the way they treat us so when the other person yell at them then they yell back they react naturally from the natural instinct now our natural instinct very often is sinful that very often we we have anger and unhappy feelings and just want to get what we want so very often people just want to get something so number two just want to get what we want to get and self-center you didn't do this to me you didn't help me you didn't listen to me so it's always me instead we want to say how do you how is your day today how do you feel every day my wife says to me how are you today how do you feel today uh, and then I'll ask her how do you feel today and then I'll talk about how my day was and then she talked about how her day was and how our feelings were and then we let, uh, respond to each other and then number four they don't think of the feelings and needs of the other, per the other person that they don't think of what they need when we think about the need of the wife then we say she needs care and love and I want to listen to her and care about her I, I know that she she wants this she wants a loving relationship I want to give this to her and then many people follow internal impulses just follow the natural impulse to be angry or unhappy or yell at each other so all this are destructive I want to say this in many marriages I, I've seen that natural tendency is always yelling and not listening 
and complaining. And what happened is, it's always, always follow the, following the, uh, the natural impulse and it's the sinful nature. So we want to overcome this and say, I treasure God, God loves me so much, and I treasure my life, my, my life is precious, and the life of my wife and children are very precious. I want to love them and care about them. I want to put time and effort into my marriage to build up the marriage. So I hope we all, we all will see the importance of building up our marriage. It's, it takes effort. And then when we do counseling, we want to find out too how is the relationship. Now this is a vicious cycle. When people have problem, it can go worse and worse. So we want to analyze how they are. When they have no love and then no communication. Now no communication, there are different levels. There are some people, they yell at each other. They, uh, they always complain. And then some people just occasionally say negative words. So there are different levels. And there are people who say positive words sometimes and then negative words sometimes. But then there are uh, couples that they don't say things positively anymore. It's always complaining. And then they criticize or nag and they yell and they get disgusted with the other person and they avoid responsibilities. They don't want to stay home anymore and then they have extramarital affair and then divorce. So this vicious cycle, it will go worse and worse. So I hope we see that it's very important to talk about marriage. It's very important that our messages talk about the real problems of people. Now I will talk about preaching uh, in the future sessions. It's very important the preaching is based on the Word of God to f help people to how to have victory in their daily life. <clears throat> it's not just in prayer life. Now prayer life is very important. When they have healthy prayer life, then they want to love the family, love people, care about people, so that they don't have any openings for the devil. So it's very important that we talk about real problems that people face, the marriage problem, the anger, the frustration, the negative words, and how to have positive words, how to have love, how to have caring, how to have uh, uh, concern for people and listening to people, how to do all these things, that we need to preach about these things. And the Bible does talk about these things too. But many preaching is just about praising God and prayer and, and uh, taking care of certain sins, but not helping people to face daily problems that they face. We need to help people to face the daily problem and have victory and have the love of God. Okay, and then the parents and children problem. It can also have a vicious cycle. So if the children are affected by the world and then there's no communication, now sometimes the parents are too pushy and the children don't want to listen to the parents because the parents, uh, maybe they yell at the children easily. Now it's the same way. Our Heavenly Father doesn't yell at us. When we sin, the Holy Spirit moves our heart gently. The Holy Spirit doesn't yell at us. But when we talk to our children, very often people yell at the children and complain and beat them. Now, when they really have done something wrong, there is time for discipline. But it's not, it should not be discipline all the time. It should be love and care and encouragement. And appreciation. <clears throat> so when the when the parents always complain and yell at the children, the children don't want to listen, and then there is a problem. So many people have not learned to communicate. And they have not learned to have the love. First, there is the love before we can have communication. First, we have the love for people, care for people, and then we have the communication. So. People are affected, children are affected by the world and no communication and they yell at each other. The parents yell at the children and then the children yell at the parents and then the children become rebellious and then there is mutual enmity. There's, they become like enemies and then the children become problematic. They don't want to study, they don't want to work, they don't want to go to school and then problematic relationship in the family. So it, 
will happen not only to the marriage but also to the family and then it will affect ourselves when we have problematic relationship and financial problem and children problem then a person will become emotional and he would have no strength no joy and then he would be spiritually low and he can break down spiritually and emotionally and the whole person has no strength so for every Christian is very happy it, very important to build up for us to build up healthy marriages healthy relationship healthy self-image that we enjoy God we love God love people and love ourselves too we love people as ourselves love your neighbor as yourselves so we love people and we love ourselves and then we keep ourselves in a healthy condition in a joyful condition peaceful condition so this is very important now if any of you are suffering in a relationship in a family relationship then you have pain and then you find that you have less strength actually you might want to give up so it's very important to repair our relationship and to repair the relationship of other people in a church and I want to say that um, marriage problem is very hard to handle because now personal problem is easier because it's only one person the person himself handled himself but for marriage problem it's not just handling ourselves we have to handle the spouse and if the spouse doesn't cooperate then it's very hard to work on the marriage so it's very important to keep the relationship in a healthy condition before it gets worse when it has got worse then it's hard to harder to repair so there are conditions of marriages that are very very difficult because they when they see each other they hate each other they dislike each other they yell at each other all the time and this is very hard to repair it takes a lot of time so we need to do marriage counseling and we need to help other people learn uh, to learn to how to do marriage counseling is is very important so we need to preach more about loving people caring for people forgiving people be kind to people and listen to people and and uh, encouraging people when we have healthy relationship then we can care about people and reach out with the gospel first we need to have healthy relationship with people before we can serve God well okay now steps of marriage counseling now because in the other uh, session uh, we have talked about how to build up the marriage now we're not talking about that you have to go back to the pre previous uh, videos to watch those again so the steps of marriage counseling for a couple that is willing to work on the marriage now there are couples who don't want to work on the marriage it's a totally different thing then we need a crisis counseling crisis counseling means they are fighting each other they they are beating each other they are hurting each other then this counseling session doesn't work because it they are too severe we have to first help them to find a way to avoid this fighting and yelling so that uh, first to solve the immediate problem first so the, those are more serious marriage problems for the more serious problem first to help them not to f fight each other and yell at each other and beat each other and that takes uh, that you know takes more work but here we are talking about couples that are willing to work on the marriage now very often people ask me what if my husband is not willing to work on marriage then it's hard so it's very important to love the husband to care about the husband so that the husband has the motivation to build up the marriage it happens many times because usually it's the woman who asks for help because women pay more attention to the family and so it's true that most pastors will find that the people who come for help are usually the wives so when a wife comes for help usually they say the husband doesn't listen, listen to me he doesn't care for me he yells at me and 
things like that and uh, or he doesn't work you know so now if the husband is willing to come together for counseling it will be great but if the husband is not willing then we have to counsel the woman how to be nice to the husband so that the husband feels the love of the wife and then be willing to change now that is much harder that is much harder and uh, I find that even very often for Christian couples the husband doesn't want to go for counseling because they think that if I go for counseling that means there is something wrong with me that means I'm admitting my fault and they don't want to admit their faults so it's, it's, it's a fact so we need to help first help the couples both of them the husband and wife both come to the church we want to help them first and then sometimes there are you know that the wife comes to the church and then uh, she finds problem with the husband and then we want to help the wife how to change her behavior so that she can build up the relationship with the husband and the husband would would seize would see her love and and acceptance and respect and then gradually change and then sometimes we can invite the husband who uh, doesn't come to the church to come for the counseling okay now first we listen to them to understand the condition of the marriage and emphasize with them empathize I'm sorry empathize with them and give hope to them so first is to listen to them and see how it is now if if they keep complaining they say okay please, please uh, pause for now uh, here is not the time to complain about everything just tell me generally how the marriage is and then empathize with them now I generally empathize with both the husband and the wife I would not take side I would not take side with the wife and say oh husband you didn't listen to her you didn't care about her and so the marriage is breaking down I don't take side generally I would say to the husband uh, I say well now when I listen to them first I will, I will explain to them about the difference between the male and female and then I will empathize with the with the man and say uh, I say yeah I know that it's very difficult for you you find it difficult to communicate with your wife because she sometimes gets frustrated and emotional and you and you don't know how to communicate it's, it seems like whatever you say she'll be unhappy so I empathize with him and I empathize with the wife and I say that oh you feel separated you feel there's a gap between you and your wife uh, your husband because he doesn't listen to, to you and he doesn't talk to you so I, I empathize with both of them so that they both feel accepted because I believe that no matter how wrong people are they because they have been you know some other people have hurt them before and then that's why they become more and more negative so people who are mistreating other have been mistreated by other people so we don't want to have empathy for them we say yes I understand that you are feeling unhappy it's difficult for you and so we empathize with them and give hope to them and say you know and so we listen to them and we say okay your marriage is still uh, there is hope uh, it's, uh, it's not very bad it's, there is some problem but it's not very bad it, it's, uh, this problem can be overcome if you follow these steps of listening to each other and caring for each other uh, praying for each other together uh, and then things will get better so we give hope to them and when we listen to them we don't teach right away in counseling it's different between counseling and, and teaching is now I want to say this pastors have a tendency to teach a lot whenever the, they say uh, we have a problem and immediately they will say repent and forgive each other and, and uh, be nice to each other and love each other and go home just teach now when people are in this level they have problems and we want them to go to a higher level they don't they cannot just go suddenly it takes time step by step for the relationship to improve so we ourselves have to work on our marriage we understand that it takes time to build up the relationship to restore that 
the relationship like before marriage it takes time and hard work and motivation so we we don't just tell them what to do we we give hope it's very important to understand encouragement now people think encouragement is like this they say okay work on it pray for, pray for your wife and uh, be kind to her they think this is encouragement this is not encouragement this is instruction instruction is not encouragement encouragement is saying I see your motivation I see that you want to work on it I know that you you know uh, you will work on it and it will become better and better so there is hope encouragement is giving hope that I see you are working on it you want to work on it and it will improve so give them hope what if there is no hope then we'll say okay if you work on it there is still hope there are still ways to change and ask if they want to work on a marriage so it's very important first they need to be willing to work on the marriage and now for many couples they are not willing to go to counseling only one person comes then we have to talk with the person and ask the person to talk with this husband and be nice to him and say I like to work on this marriage to make it better are you willing so this is very important whether we're counseling or when couples are talking to each other we need to ask each other and we need to express ourselves and say I want to work on my marriage I want this marriage to improve and ask them to say the strengths of their spouse so this steps I hope uh, you remember and I'll, I've sent you the uh, in the WhatsApp the PDF file so you can look at this again so ask them to say the strength of the spouse so now the strength of the spouse especially in how the spouse treats them it's not that oh my wife is hardworking she she cooks very well it's not just this but she's nice to me she wants to communicate with me she cares about me she respects me so these are the strengths of the relationship the, the strength of the relationship is very important and we need to learn to appreciate that so when they say uh, when I counsel them I would ask them to say to each other uh, that your strength say uh, the wife said to her husband your strength is this and this and I, I really like it and I thank you for doing that and then the husband will respond with thank you thank you for telling me that I'm very happy to hear that so help them to respond to each other in this session in a counseling session to help them to to say the good things about the other person now there are couples who cannot name any strength of the other person then I asked them okay when you marry the other person why did you marry him or her what strength did you find and so name that strength that you saw when you date him or her so what was what was the strength at that time and then at that time did, how did he or she treat you how was the relationship at that point and then we'll talk about how this relationship has deteriorated and then ask them to respond to each other and thank you for telling me that I'm very happy to hear that and then number four ask them if they believe the marriage has the potential to get better so do you believe that the marriage will get better do you believe that it will improve <clears throat> do you believe that uh, that you can work on this now some people say it's hard but it's very hard okay then I'll say can you change a little bit sometimes they'll say I can change but he cannot change that I say okay forget about him just you can you change can you change a little bit do you think uh, do you want to get better and if there's potential are there strength of each person that you can improve okay number five explain the difference between male and female and the biblical principle of loving one sp spouse and mutual submission to one another so I'll always explain the difference between male and female and that's the prob cause of problem of most marriages and the biblical principle of loving one spouse and uh, you know the Bible says love your wife as Christ has loved the church and giving his life for the church so 
have you loved your wife to extend that you're willing to give your life to to your wife uh, how about giving time to her how about giving support and encouragement to her and uh, so are you willing to do that are you following the biblical principle and then because it's important for the husband to be respected so the wife does the wife submit to him now the submission of the wife is not just you know some husband think that it's it is like this that the wife has to submit unconditionally no matter what the husband does the wife has to submit 100% actually in Ephesians when you talk about the wife submit to your husband before that verse it says submit to one another so submit to each other so the husband also submit to the wife to listen to the wife and respond to her needs it's not just the wife submitting to the husband so uh, there need to be mutual submission and uh, now but why did Paul emphasize that the wife submit to the husband because women have a strong sense of responsibility so they have a uh, they see that the husband is not taking care of the family uh, the children are not of, uh, obeying her and then she get very unhappy and then she would uh, push the husband and the children to change so the Bible says you know Paul said that because the, because the wife is always pushing too much that you want to submit more and then for the husband generally the husband have problem loving so the husband need to learn to love Okay, and then explain how they can say words of grace and say words of the Lord gently in order to build up the relationship. Now, we have talked about this in previous sessions, but I'm going to explain this again. There is words of grace and words of the law of God and also of people. Of God, words of grace would be, God loves me, God cares about me, God has a wonderful plan in my life, God wants to do great things in my life, God accepts me, so these are words of grace from God. And then words of the law is to love God, to obey God, to do evangelism, to help people, to forgive one another. These are the words of the law. Now we should say words of grace to each other too, to people too. And not only to the wife, but also to the members. We want to learn to say words of grace to people. To say, I'm happy to see you. It's great to see you. I like you. Now, I like you, it means, you know, in a, in a healthy way. You know, when we say to all the members, I like you. As church members, you are doing great. I like you in that sense. Not, we don't say it secretly to a girl and say, oh, I like you. That's different. We're saying to the people, I like you. You are wonderful people. I like you. I'm happy to be with you. So these are words of grace. And I appreciate you. I, I like what you are doing. So we should say words of grace to, to people and to the spouse. And so they need to learn to say words of grace. So you can practice after this session. You can practice saying words of grace. So what are something you can say? Basically words of appreciation and words that give hope. We can say, uh, I, I really like what you do. You're doing well and you have done good things to me and I, I like your cooking, I like what you do, I like your gentleness, so words of grace. And then words of law. In our daily life, there are a lot of things we need to take care of. There are a lot of things we need to do. And we, we can say words of the law in a gentle way. Instead of in a demanding way, instead of in a harsh way. We can say, um, how can we have better communication and uh, I like to have better communication with you and I like to hear what is in your heart tell me what is in your heart and I like to tell you what is in my heart are you willing to listen now before we talk about something serious we can ask the other person would you like to hear what is in my heart do you like to hear my feelings so we can communicate our desire to communicate so these are words of the law what we need to do the law is what we do grace is what we give to people what God gives to us 
So what God gives is grace. And what tell us what God tells us to do is the law. So to people too, we say words of grace and say, I love you, I care about you, I appreciate you, I'm happy with you. And then words of law would be, uh, how can we overcome this problem? How can we have better communication? How can we care about each other more? So these are words of the law. And how can we help the children uh, more? How can we have a loving relationship like before marriage? Okay, so learn to say, and also please clear the garbage. Instead of saying, do it, do it. You can say, please do it. And I, I'm very happy that you're doing it. Okay, in order to build up the relationship. So it's very important to learn to say words of grace and words of the law gently instead of harshly. Many people say things harshly and say, you didn't do it. You always forget. You never, you're never nice to me. You le never listen to me. All these are critical. So whenever we say, you didn't do it, we have to avoid that. Instead, we can say, I'd like you to do that. I'm very happy when you do that. That is guiding the other person to change. Okay, guiding the other person to change instead of saying, why didn't you do it? So we say, how can we communicate better? I like to communicate better with you. Uh, we can work on this. Okay, number seven, ask them to try to resolve one of the problems using gentle words to counsel or guide them to communicate gently and constructively. Okay, now number seven is the main part of my counseling. I found this very helpful. Is I've explained to them how to talk gently to each other. And then now I ask them, do you want to talk about one thing in your relationship? Uh, it can be a small thing, it can be a big thing. Do you have anything you want to talk about? And you try to resolve this problem. It can be a small problem. But in the process, please use gentle words, gentle words of grace to say to each other, appreciate each other, and words of the law to guide each other. Instead of saying, you didn't listen to me, you didn't, uh, you didn't care for me, you didn't uh, uh, respond to me. Instead of saying that, we can, we can say, we can ask them to say, for instance, uh, I find there is problem with communication and uh, I like to be able to uh, communicate with you better. I like to hear what's in your heart and I like you to listen to me when I tell you what's in my heart. So ask them to resolve one of the problems using gentle words. And a counselor guide them to communicate gently and constructively. And this is very important. This is the very difficult part that the pastor, the counselor has to learn to counsel himself, to solve his problem, and then to guide the other person. Instead of yelling at the person, will say, when you just said that, do you think, how do you think it will make the other person feel? Sometimes one person will say to the other person, he never does it. He didn't do it. He didn't listen to me. That doesn't help. So I, I would stop and say, what do you think the other person feel? Even though he has been doing that, but how does he feel? He will feel he is always bound to fail. He always is a failure. Instead, we can say, um, I'd like to be able to communicate with you better. I'd like to hear what's in your heart. I'd like to be able to uh, uh, tell you what's in my heart and you listen to me. So we guide them how to communicate gently. This is very, very important. So after this session, you can practice and then you can tell me next time how was the practice. Okay, and then number eight, the counselor lets them, now we'll go through this uh, steps later, but now I'm just uh, telling you the steps. Later I will uh, go through each step gent uh, uh, one by one. The counselor lets them know how the relationship is uh, how, and how they can improve on the relationship. So when we, when we counsel people, we s hear the, how they communicate and we know how they are and then we can evaluate and tell them how they are. We can tell them the strength first, how the strength is, and when they work on it, they have the potential to get better. 
and then uh, sometimes the husband doesn't want to listen or when he listens he doesn't get what he hears he doesn't understand his wife I have, I have uh, counseled many couples that the husband have problem listening because th that is not a habit of many men many men don't listen so when they hear something they don't get what their person say when a person says I'm unhappy the man immediately they will say I didn't do anything wrong instead of responding to what she said she said I'm unhappy we can respond like this please tell me why you are unhappy if I do anything wrong please forgive me so that's responding to what they say instead of saying I didn't do anything wrong it's your fault you are the one who gets unhappy that is complaining that's denying that's thinking their person is complaining now their person might be complaining but we want to be able to respond to their feelings and needs and say uh, I know that you are unhappy I hear that you are unhappy I'm sorry to hear that please tell me about it and I, I'm willing to work on it to improve our relationship so that you will be happier in the future so that is a healthy way to respond but this is not easy to learn so it's uh, actually how to do marriage counseling is not an easy thing so for pastors and leaders here you want to practice that and next time and before next time you can send me messages to ask me questions and then I'll answer next time and I will use more examples as time goes on uh, how to do it okay so we evaluate how and tell them how they are and then the counselor and give them assignments to do how to treat each other nicely and to manage the problems so we give them guidance how to do it and then 10 the counselor follows up on how they have improved or they have not improved he then counsels them how to improve so he finds out how they are okay so